two playoff games against the Dodgers, two games that went in completely different directions. In game one, Logan Webb carried the Giants. He just had one of the best starts you'll ever see in the postseason, let alone like of his career. My goodness, he was so dominant and excellent and just carried the Giants to a 4 nothing win. So it set them up really nicely in game two, but it did not go their way. There were a few critical decisions that Gabe Kapler had to make, and none of them really worked out. So we'll break down decision by decision what those were, why they didn't work out, and if I think they were the right calls. And so finally, after talking about the win, the loss, uh, we will get you set for Game 3 of this division series, a pivotal Game 3 tonight in Los Angeles uh, as the Giants are looking to beat L.A. here in this Best of 5 series. So we'll talk about all of that next on today's Locked on Giants podcast. You are Locked on Giants, your daily San Francisco Giants podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello and welcome to Locked On Giants Baseball, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. My name is Ben Kaspic, and on this show, we provide daily episodes Monday through Friday talking about the San Francisco Giants in a way that's data driven and rational, but also simple, passionate, and accessible to all. I'm a former contributor for the baseball statistics and analysis websites Beyond the Box Score and Rotographs. I've been podcasting about the Giants since 2015, and I'm a lifelong fan. Thank you so much for making Locked On Giants your first listen every day. We are free and available on all platforms, which now includes YouTube, so check us out there. And coming up on today's show, as I mentioned there, we're going to talk about two playoff games. Uh, as we know, Logan Webb just dealt, you know, he pitched a gem, a web gem in game one of this series. And then in game two, Giants had a shot to go up 2-0, but it just did not happen kind of a series of unfortunate events, so we'll break down what went wrong, and then we'll get you set for Game 3. But I think the place to start here is my takeaways from overall just where the series is at right now, tied 1-1, to and that kind of takes us to Game 2 as a place to start. The Giants had a shot here, but ultimately they fell to the Dodgers 9-2. to It just became a pretty ugly game when all was said and done, but there were a few critical decisions that were made that kind of led to that point. So we'll break them down and talk about, you know, what went wrong and if I think they were the right call or not. And so the first thing that stood out to me was the decision to let Kevin Gosman pin, uh, excuse me, hit for himself in the bottom of the fifth inning. Giants were trailing two to one. Julio Urias was still on the mound for the Dodgers, a left-handed pitcher. Giants had their you know, righty heavy lineup in there. And so that was part of the consideration was that they had all their righties in the lineup. And so they didn't really have a good righty option to go to to pinch hit for Gosman. So that was part of the decision making process for Kapler for sure. But okay, the way I see it is that okay, Kevin Gosman was shaky early on. He wasn't sharp Kevin Gosman early on. And he allowed two runs in the second inning. But in the middle innings, 3, 4, and 5, he settled down and looked much better. So that was also part of the decision-making process for Kapler. However, they were down a run, there was one out, and nobody on base. I just personally didn't like the decision to let, or to basically punt on the bottom of the fifth inning, with the benefit being that you'll let Kevin Gosman go back out there and you think he's on a roll. But to me, the downside was that it's the middle of the Dodgers lineup coming up. It's Trey Turner, Justin Turner, Will Smith. Three right-handed hitters. However, you've got a fresh and rested bullpen. So I'm not uh, going to sit here and say that it was completely the wrong decision. It's a judgment call. And to have to make those decisions in the dugout in real time is extremely difficult. Way more difficult than most fans you know, give credit. They we want to make it sound like it's easy, but it is not at all easy to do that job and to make those decisions in real time. So I think it's a perfectly justifiable decision to leave him in. 
I personally felt at the time before it happened and still feel now that they should have pinch hit for Kevin Gosman. And just given the top of the lineup, which was obviously right around the corner there, a shot with potentially a guy on base because Kevin Gosman, who hits left-handed against Julio Urias, basically had no shot. And so then you're giving up an out there and guaranteeing pretty much that it's going to be two outs, nobody on for the top of your order, which is a tough way to, to kind of get a rally going. Although, you know, it's rough and Bryant and either one could hit a home run easily. So maybe you don't need a rally to score, but Regardless, I thought they should have pinch hit, but they only had left-handed options, really. They had Kurt Casale as the one righty, but otherwise we're looking at Yastrzemski or Lastella probably as the choices to be the pinch hitters there. So they didn't score in that inning, and then the top of the six rolls around. Of course, Giants still trailing 2-1, to one, and the Dodgers ended up scoring four runs in the inning. It did not start off well for Kevin Gosman. He allowed a leadoff double to Trey Turner. He struck out Justin Turner on looks like three pitches, so that was impressive. And then he walked Will Smith. And at that point, Gabe Kapler made the decision to take out Kevin Gosman and bring in Dominic Leone. So basically, like I said, series of unfortunate events, because if you pinch hit for Gosman, Leone probably starts the sixth inning and maybe Trey Turner doesn't lead off with a double. Who knows? That's the thing. That's the benefit of hindsight. But it all kind of unraveled from there because Leon walked Trey Turner, or excuse me, walked Chris Taylor, and then Cody Bellinger hit a gapper that scored two runs. AJ Pollock doubled, which scored two runs, and that was it. It was six to one, and basically the game was over at that point. Giants only ended up scoring two times in the game. The other decisions that were made that people were griping or grumbling and griping about were the decision to go to Zach Littell in the game in general, instead of maybe curving Castro in that spot. I'm just going to say, yeah, maybe, but the Giants were trailing 6-2 to two at that point. Littell ends up giving up a leadoff home run, I think, on the first pitch that he threw, and three runs in the inning. So a bad outing for Littell. His last, his last couple outings have been bad, so I would probably stay away from him. I would probably put him at the bottom of the depth chart behind even curving Castro at this point. I think we've seen enough to say, hey, stay away from Latell if there's anything at all on the line right now. So I understand the gripe there, but at the same time, it was 6-2 to two at that point. The game was already out of hand. You're within reach there, so I understand that argument, but it just it didn't ultimately seem to have a huge impact on the game. The other decision that was made that I'm just going to write off as you know, the complaints are not justified here, was the decision to intentionally walk A.J. Pollock, the number eight hitter, in the second inning when the Dodgers had their two-run rally. The Giants had, there were guys on base, and Pollock is the last hitter in the lineup before the pitcher, and they tried to pitch to him. And the first two pitches were, the first pitch was in the zone but called a ball. Buster Posey did not frame it well. Second pitch was like down low in the dirt, and Pollock just didn't even think about swinging. He'd completely laid off the pitch. Then they decided to intentionally walk him to bring up the pitcher. Now, to me, perfectly justifiable. I understand Julio Urias is a good hitting pitcher, but a 2-0 count to a real hitter versus a fresh count to a pitcher, that's just a call that's easy to make, and I completely understood why they did that. What ended up happening was Urias had a big hit, against Kevin Gosman that drove in I'm trying to I'm trying to uh, pull up exactly how many runs it scored. It scored just one run and then Mookie Betts of course came up next. That's the danger is that if Urias does get on then you you flip over to the top of the order. But the thing is AJ Pollock is a good hitter. I hear that some people are trying to say that he's been in a slump or he doesn't do well in the postseason. He ended up having two hits in the game after that point, including a double, like I mentioned, against Dominic Leone. So I don't really buy that. To me, that was fine. Latell was fine. I, I guess I probably would agree that Castro might have been a better choice there. To me, the decision to not pinch hit for Gosman was the one that I didn't like at the time, and it it really didn't end up working out. But again, it's a judgment call. 
and a call was made, and I think it's justifiable. The Giants just ultimately didn't play their best game. They only got two runs, and it's tough to beat the Dodgers when you only score two runs. You, you have to be perfect on the pitching and defense side, which the Giants were not. So anyway, coming up next, we're going to get into the more happy game, game one. We'll talk about what went right for the Giants there, and then ultimately we will get you set for this pivotal game three tonight in Los Angeles. But first, does this sound familiar? You've got one device that lets you catch the game live, another that lets you stream your favorite shows, you're watching sports highlights on your phone, and you've got your neighbor's best friends log in for the good stuff. Well, I want to tell you about a simple way to get all that entertainment you love without the hassle, and a great way to finally get your TV together. It's called DirecTV Stream, and it brings your live TV and on-demand favorites together like never before, so you can watch your favorite sports, movies, and shows all in one place. That means no more juggling remotes and no need to buy another device ever again. And the best part is that there's no annual contract. So get rid of the clutter and the confusion and get your TV together with DirecTV Stream. You can learn more at directtv.com. That's directtv.com. Compatible device required. Content varies by package. All right, as promised, we're going to talk about a little bit of more of a happy thing, the Giants winning game one. And this is something I always point to. If you're a longtime listener of the show, you've heard me say this a thousand times. But imagine if these two games were switched. If the Giants came out of the gates and lost like they did in game two in game one, and then game two, imagine if it was this four to nothing shutout and Logan Webb was brilliant. We'd all be thinking about this series a little bit differently, even though the result is exactly the same. The Giants tied with the Dodgers one to one going to Los Angeles. Now, it may be true that there's something to momentum and, you know, the Dodgers feel good coming, uh, coming into this game two, or excuse me, game three, and the Giants are a little bit down about the way that they played. There may be something to that, but ultimately, it doesn't really matter which game happened first. So I always find that to be like an interesting thought experiment to try to trick myself, basically, into thinking, okay, imagine that this Logan Webb masterpiece was the second game of the series, and then do I feel better about the series? I do, even though that's illogical. So that's just part of being human. We're not necessarily the most logical creatures out there, but uh, that's the way it is. But game one, I mean, as bad as game two was, game one was that great. And it began and ended with Logan Webb. Like, he he set the tone, just like in game 162, when he pitched a gem, pitched into the eighth inning in both games there. Man, I mean, seven and two-thirds innings for Webb, 10 strikeouts, no walks, no runs, five hits. He was just absolutely masterful. And he made a Dodgers offense that, as we saw in game two, is so dynamic and explosive and capable of just putting up crooked numbers at any moment he made them look bad like not just like he he shut them down but he made them look bad they were just flailing all over the place logan webb had that his he threw a lot of change-ups more than he normally does and that pitch you know darting in towards righties and he's got his slider you know darting away from righties and so the pitches are kind of darting in opposite directions and they're coming in at the same tunnel. And so the hitters just had no idea what was coming and were flailing, basically. And then he's got his mid-90s, you know, low to mid-90s sinker that just has a ton of uh, vertical movement and horizontal movement. He just looked as good as I've ever seen him look. And the, the other good thing is that if you imagine if the Giants can just win a game in L.A., obviously preferably win both, but if they can just find a way to win one, then we're going back to San Francisco for game five, and it would be Logan Webb back on the mound for the Giants. Obviously, it would be ideal to win in four, and you can save Webb for game one of the National League Championship Series. But, you know, to have Webb in your back pocket as a potential, you know, not potential, but as your game five starter the Giants would feel pretty good about those chances, especially given that it's a home game. And they've earned that right for it to be a home game by having a better record than the Gi uh, the Dodgers in the regular season. So 
Just a great game. Giants had three home runs. They scored all their runs on home runs. Buster Posey in the first inning against Walker Bueller. They did this to Bueller again. They beat Bueller the last time they faced him on Sunday Night Baseball, and they beat him again here. Gave up three runs in six and a third. Not a bad start by any means, but he did give up two home runs, which is a big deal. I mean, the Giants, when they're hitting home runs, they're winning. And, you know, that was the whole thing. We've talked about this ad nauseum about how the Giants score via the home run and that's not a bad thing and it's going to work in the playoffs just like it worked in the regular season it's not bad to be reliant on home runs and we saw that in game one Buster Posey first inning opposite field home run that may have gone into the cove if it wasn't stopped by one of the pillars supporting the water cannons so what a shot that was it bounced into the cove ultimately but, you know, it, it may have actually gone in on the fly, which would have been the first time a right-handed hitter ever hit a home run into the water. But unfortunately, it didn't because it hit the pillar. But still, just an amazing shot by Buster Posey, who's just having a really good series. That was his lone time actually reaching base in that uh, first game. But, you know, what an impact it was. And then he had three hits in the second game of the series, including a double. So, you know, for him to be locked in and hopefully to keep it going here would be huge because, you know, the rest of the guys, there's a lot of guys who are capable of doing damage in this lineup. In game one, Bryant had three hits, Chris Bryant, three hits, including a home run. Tommy LaStella had two hits and a walk. He had a great game. He and Crawford turned a magical double play. LaStella fielding it on a backhand and just kind of flipping it up in the air very difficult angle and and like Crawford grabs it from up in the air and like you know tiptoes around the base and steps on the base and throws to first and gets the double play Giants were just kind of firing on all cylinders in this game uh, defensively they did make a couple errors but you know one of them was on Logan Webb which was a tough error that that easily could have not been called an error the other one I'm actually not seeing I'm not able to find it really quickly as I glance through here but they played a good game defensively, and, and those errors don't really tell the story. Tyler Rogers came in to get one out against Corey Seager. I think he threw two pitches, and he got a big ground out there in the eighth inning. And then Camilo Duvall was just dominant in the ninth. So that was the story from game one. Logan Webb, the hero, and on offense, the home run ball, uh, the big key for the Giants. And so hopefully in game three against Max Scherzer, they can, you know, Put some balls in the air, hard contact in the air. Put some balls in the seat, in the seats, excuse me. And maybe that'll be the key to victory with the Giants going with Alex Wood. So on paper, a little bit of a mismatch in favor of the Dodgers. But of course, it's baseball. And in any one game, anything can happen. And we can't really know what's going to happen until we see it with our own eyes. So coming up next, we're going to get you set for game three of this series tonight in Los Angeles. So stay tuned for that conversation. But first, did you know that Built Bar has so many delicious flavors? There's really something for everyone. When you talk to a Built Bar fan, they're definitely passionate about their favorites. If you don't know the Built Bar flavors, you're missing out. Coconut, cherry, raspberry, mint brownie, double chocolate, salted caramel, strawberry orange, cookies and cream, German chocolate, my favorite flavor is raspberry, but you really can't go wrong. And it's really true that uh, people are passionate about which Built Bar flavor is their favorite. We talk about this all the time in our Locked On group chat. To me, it's really important that not only are these Built Bars delicious, but they're also healthy. Only four to five grams of sugar to go along with 17 to 18 grams of protein. Go to BuiltBar.com and use promo code LOCKED15 and you'll get 15% off your next order. Use promo code LOCKED15 for 15% off at BuiltBar.com. All right, as promised, we're going to get you set for game three of this series. A pivotal game. Obviously, at the end of today's game, one team is going to be on the brink of moving on and the other is going to be facing elimination in game four. These best of five series, to me, I've always thought that even in the first round here, it should be a best of seven because, I don't know, these best of five game series 
anything can really happen. It's a little bit too short, in my opinion. And the quote unquote momentum of the series changes with every single game. Like, look at uh, the Astros and White Sox as an example. The Astros were up 2 0. Obviously, you can't do better than that in the first two games, but then they go to Chicago and the White Sox win game three. And you can honestly say that even though they're down two to one now, the White Sox, quote unquote, have the momentum of that series. People, you know, because every game changes the series so much. And so anyway, the Giants have a shot tonight to push the Dodgers to the brink. And if the Giants win, imagine our uh, reaction and how we're going to be feeling. And if the Giants lose, imagine how you're going to be feeling then. And so either thing is possible and we'll either be facing elimination or, or putting the Dodgers on the brink of elimination at the end of tonight's game. So it's a lot. That's just the way it is, the best of five. But, you know, obviously you've got a shot tonight and your only focus can be trying to win this one game tonight. And it's going to be Max Scherzer on the mound for the Dodgers. He's their kind of number one starter, but he pitched in the wild card game. And that's why we haven't seen him yet in this series. And for the Giants, they're going to go with Alex Wood. And on paper, it's a little bit of a mismatch in favor of the Dodgers. But Alex Wood has been really good. And overall in the season, we're talking about a 3.83 ERA, peripherals even better, 3.48 fielding independent pitching, 3.44 expected fielding independent pitching, expected ERA 3.87, all kinds of numbers here. But basically, he just had a really, really solid season. And he gives them a shot. And he's he obviously played for the Dodgers. He played... He's pitched more innings for the Dodgers in his career than any other team. He's very familiar with that Dodgers team, with their whole organization, and they're very familiar with him. So I don't know if that gives them some kind of a leg up, uh, given that they know him, they know his tendencies. From what I understand, the Giant, or the Dodgers' advanced kind of preparation for these games is second to none, and they put in a ton of work on preparing for each individual game. And I'm sure the Giants are doing the exact same thing. Uh, there's a lot of parallels between these two teams with Farhan Zaidi, former GM of the Dodgers recently. Like he knows what they do to get ready for games. Of course, he was a huge part of it. And now he's here with the Giants. And, you know, Gabe Kapler was the former farm director for the Dodgers. So they all know like what the Dodgers do. And they've brought a lot of that to the Giants. And frankly, it's a huge reason why the Giants have turned their franchise around and they won 107 games and beat the Dodgers in the division, which I still can't really believe that that happened, but it did. And here we are one to one pivotal game three, like it all hinges on this game and the winner of game three, when the series was tied one to one going into game three goes on to win the series historically about 72% of the time, something like that. So it does make a big difference. However, uh, they mentioned when I was watching one of the other games yesterday that since 2013, that number is only like 54%, which surprised me, but teams have been able to come back from down two to one because like I said, the whole like momentum of the series will hinge on the next game. If you lose, you're obviously eliminated, but if you win, you're going into game five off a win and from the Giants perspective, say they lose tonight and then win game four, not only do they have they are they coming off a win, but they're going home and they have Logan Webb on the mound who they feel supremely confident in. So, you know, from that perspective, like I said, it all does hinge on each individual game. But obviously your preference would just be to win tonight and win game four and just get it over with. So, so many different possibilities. Max Scherzer just had a fantastic season was even better after being traded to the Dodgers. Overall this year, 2.46 ERA, 2.97 fielding independent pitching, 3.24 expected fielding independent pitching, 2.89 expected ERA. Just great, great numbers. Doesn't really walk anybody. Uh, gets a lot of strikeouts. He's tough. He is a tough customer, but you know, so it goes. It wasn't supposed to be easy. Nobody said it was going to be easy. And if you want to 
be the best, you got to beat the best. And that's the position the Giants are in right now. So I'm looking forward to it, and I can't wait. And all these games are in kind of prime time, which is different for the Giants, and it obviously has a lot to do with the fact that they're facing the Dodgers. But, you know, some in the past, these playoff games, some of them were like in the day, and we would not have to wait all day to, to see the game. But that's how it goes tonight. Giants, around 6 o'clock, I don't know the exact game time, uh, they're going to play ball, and they're going to be taking on this great Dodgers team again. And we will have it covered tomorrow. We'll have a podcast on Tuesday breaking down this pivotal game three. Uh, we do these shows every single weekday. So thanks again for making Locked on Giants your first listen every day. And we'll be back tomorrow breaking down game three. But for today, please make your second listen Locked on MLB. Paul Francis Sullivan, uh, please call him Sully brings you his unique perspective on the major leagues, past and present. It's free and available on all platforms. Once again, my name is Ben Kaspic. You can follow me on Twitter at Ben Kaspic. That's K-A-S-P-I-C-K. If you like this show, please consider rating it, leaving a review, liking, commenting, subscribing on YouTube, all of that good stuff. So thank you in advance and thank you to everyone who's done so already. I can't wait to be with you again tomorrow. Thanks again for listening. You are now Locked on Giants.